Radio Gold. Welcome to Radio Gold. I am Randall Emerson, and I will be your host as we continue the exploration of our vast and varied archives of classical radio programs for your entertainment. X-1 was an American half-hour science fiction radio drama series that was broadcast from 1955 to 1958 in various time slots on NBC. Known for high production values and adapting stories from the leading American authors of the era, X-1 has been described as one of the finest offerings of American radio drama and one of the best science fiction series in any medium of all time. Venus is a man's world, takes you on a humorous, satirical romp that only William Tenn could pull off. We are pleased to present to you this wry, witty, and intelligent radio play adaptation of his classic short story. Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents X minus one. Tonight, the time, 150 years from now. The place, a luxury spaceship en route to Venus. The story, Venus is a Man's World, by William Tenn. Some fellows are lucky. They have brothers, but not me. I have nothing but sisters. Two of them, Carrie and Evelyn. Sometimes Carrie isn't too bad, for a girl, I mean. But Evelyn, boy, she's hopeless. It was Evelyn's idea to put me on that spaceship, jam-packed with 300 females, and all of them aching to get themselves husbands. In the one place that's still to be had, the planet Venus. Well, anyway, 20 minutes after we took off from the spaceport, I was bored stiff. Ferdinand, do stop fidgeting and sit down. I don't have anything to do. Well, I'll read to you and Carrie. Would you like that? No. I want to do something. What's the name of the book, sis? Well, it's titled Family Problems of the Frontier Woman. Doesn't it sound intriguing? Peachy keen. That's enough out of you, young man. Why don't you take a walk around the ship? Can I go with Ferdinand, sis? Well, wouldn't you rather we start the book? You should, Carrie. Every girl should read about the family problems of the frontier woman. Keep quiet, you boy. Oh, oh children, let's have enough of that. Now, go ahead, run along, you two, and, and Carrie, look after Ferdinand. See that he keeps out of mischief. Gee, this is one big ship, isn't it? Uh-huh. I sort of wish we were on a cargo ship instead of this liner. Why? This is super. On a cargo ship, we could go climbing from deck to deck on a ladder. We could even go to the bridge or the forecastle and talk with the crew. That's silly. Why would anyone want to do that? Because ship's crews are men. Only because we women are too busy with important things like government to run ships. Says you. Hey, what are you looking at? The sign. In the event of disaster affecting the oxygen content of the companionway, break glass with hammer upon wall, remove spacesuit, and proceed to don it. Boy, I hope we have that kind of a disaster. I sure would like to get into one of those. Oh, you're silly. Hey, let's go exploring down this way. I see some portholes. And I see a sign that says, Notice, passengers are not permitted past this point. Come on, there's no one around. And besides, I'm not really a passenger. Ferdinand, you say you're not really a passenger. 
Well, what do you mean? You have to be a citizen of a planet in order to get a passport, right? I'm not sure. Well, I'm telling you. Ever since they passed that Maldi Suffrage Act, only women can be Earth citizens. You and Evelyn are passengers, all right. But me, I'm just a male dependent. So when a sign says, off limits for passengers, doesn't mean me. I'm not a passenger, see? Keep away from that door, Ferdinand. Can't you see the sign? You and your old signs. Ferdinand, let's go back to the cabin. I want to see what's behind this door. If you don't come back with me this very minute, I'll tell Evelyn. So what? Hey, this looks like a sign o'clock. I wonder if it works by knock or voice. Ferdinand, I'm going. Say, I remember one voice key. I wonder if it'll work. 2023, open sesame. Ferdinand! Out of all the million possible combinations, I hit it just right. The door clicked open into a a dimly lit hole. As the door closed, my hand closed around my throat. The lights came on, and I found myself staring up the muzzle of a highly polished blaster, held by the biggest man I'd ever seen. We just stood there looking at each other for a while, till finally he said... Why, you're only a tadpole. Sir? The little tadpole. I must be getting jumpy enough to splash. My name is Ferdinand Sparling. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. I uh... hope for your sake you aren't a tadpole brother to one of them husbandless Anura. Husbandless what? Anura. Herd of females looking a nest. I come from Flatway, folks. You're a Venusian? Yep. What part of Earth are you from? And what are you doing on a spaceship to Venus? You know, the three out of four. Yeah, how's that? The three out of four. No more than three women out of every four on Earth can expect to find husbands. Not enough men to go around, you know, with the third atomic war and all. Why, back in the 20th century, some of our best men went to the planets. My sister Evelyn says that by now, most of the men on Earth aren't even worth marrying. <laughs> well, that's for sure. Those busybody on Europe took care of that. Earth, what a place. I had a belly full. Why did you come in the first place? I came looking for a wife. Women are pretty scarce on Venus. I heard that there was a surplus of them on Earth. I can't understand why any man would, would even want to marry a woman. How old are you, Tadpole? Thirteen, almost fourteen. Well, that explains a lot of things, Tadpole. It doesn't explain why you're heading back to Venus. Because I was in trouble the minute I landed on that woman's world. I didn't know I had to register at a government-operated hotel for transient males. Imagine, they told me a man couldn't say anything in court. All talking was done by female attorneys to a female judge. But I told them off. I told them where I come from. A man spoke his piece when he had a mind to, and his woman walked by his side. Well, what happened? Oh, I was found guilty of this and contempt of that. But I wasn't going to serve all those fancy little prison sentences, so I broke out and stowed away. Y- you mean that you're breaking the law right now? Sure, aren't you? Uh, I guess so. I'm also a man outside the law. We're in this together. Shake, Ferdinand. Ferdinand? That's not a right label for a sprouting tadpole. I'll call you Ford. My name's Butt. Butt Lee Brown. Is Butt a nickname like Ford? Yeah, short for Alberta. But I haven't found a man who can draw a blaster fast enough to call me that. You see, Pop came over in the 80s with the first wave of immigrants from Ontario. Named all of us boys after Canadian provinces. I was the youngest, so I got the name they were saving for a girl. Golly, Mr. Butt. You must have had a lot of brothers. Yeah, full nest. They're sass. His real name is Saskatchewan. Manny, after Manitoba. And Yuke, he was named for Yukon. I got one for every province and territory in Canada. Golly, all I have is two sisters. Oh, tell me about them. Well, there's Carrie. She's almost 16. Yeah, well, how about your other sister? Is she a little older? She's old, all right. Evelyn's almost 21. She pretty? Who? Your sister, Evelyn. Oh, I don't know. She's healthy. She's got very good teeth. If I know her breed, she's bossy and opinionated. Well, I know the women. Oh, there goes the dinner going forward. You better scat. Growing tadpoles need their vitamins. Could I bring you some chow? I could stuff it in my pocket and sneak it back here. No, thanks. I've stashed away enough provisions. i got plenty of kelp and Venusian mud grapes to last the trip. Oh, you better shove off, Ford. They'll start looking for you. Guess I had better. Well, I'll see you right after dinner, Mr. Butt. Just plain butt to you, Ford. Oh, okay. I'll be seeing you. 2023, open sesame. Ferdinand, please be seated. I want to talk with you. Now? They just rang the dinner gong. I am aware of that. Now, where have you been? Around. 
I demand a straight answer. Where have you been, Ferdinand? I told you, sis, around. And don't call me Ferdinand. Call me Ford. That's what Bud calls me. Bart! Who is Bart? Oh, nobody. I just made it up. Ferdinand! I can't tell you. I can't. You must. Well, you promise you won't turn him in. Well, Bud's my friend. He's a Venusian. He's going home. Aboard our ship, the Eleanor Roosevelt? Ferdinand, don't you realize you've been consorting with a stowaway, a criminal? What sort of antisocial ideas has this warmongering masculinist been putting into your head? Bud's a nice guy. He asked about you. Oh, indeed. I told him you had very good teeth. Really? Well, take me to this, this man. I will if you promise not to turn him in. No, I promise. <laughs> in there. The door has a sonic lock. I know the combination. Watch. 2023. Open sesame. Oh, it's so dark in there. But, hey, but, I brought along my sister Evelyn. She'd like to meet you. It's all right. Put on the lights. Oh. An honor, Miss Sparling. Please come right in. First, Mr. Bart, it's I want... It's brown. Butley Brown. First, Mr. Brown, you realize that you are committing two crimes. One, the political crime of traveling without a visa, and two, the criminal act of stowing away without paying your fare. Golly, Sitz, that's, that's no way to talk to Buck. I take it you either have no defense or care to make none. I wonder if all the Anura talk like that, and you want to foul up Venus. We haven't done so badly on Earth after the mess you men made of politics. Hear, hear. Yeah, hear, hear. Oh, you keep quiet, Ferdinand. And another point, Mr. Butley Brown. I don't suppose you know that under space regulations, you've made this poor child an accessory. But didn't make me anything. Let's not talk law, female. Let's talk sense. I'm in trouble because I went to Earth to look for a wife. You're standing right here now because you're on your way to Venus for a husband. So, let's. Let's? Let's what? <gasps> Are you daring to suggest now, that... Miss Sparling, no hoopla. I'm saying let's get married and you know it. Gee, sis, say yes. And what makes you think that I consider you a desirable husband? Figure it this way. If you wanted a poodle, you're pretty enough to pick one up on Earth. When you go charging off to Venus, you don't want a poodle, you want a man, and I'm one. I own three islands in the Galerton Archipelago. Good farmland when they're cleared. I got no bad habits. Outside of having my own way, I'm passable good-looking. Uh, my teeth are good, too. Besides... If you marry me, you'll be the first mated on this ship. And that's a splash most nesting females like to make. You know, there's more to marriage than just doing... So there is. Well, we can try each other for taste. <sighs> now, me, I'd vote yes. Me, too. I'd vote yes. Now I'll cast my vote. Well, you guessed it. She broke her promise. I suppose the kiss did it. She put it a stowaway to the captain, and he sent a detail from the ship's crew to halt Butt off to the brig. Well, later that afternoon, all the passengers, 300 females and me, gathered in the lounge for the hearing. It's all on account of you. Shush! Don't shush me. You promised your word wouldn't get Butt into trouble. Oh, you snitch. Shush! The captain is rapping for quiet. By authority vested in me under the Pomona College Treaty... The stowaway, a Venusian, Butt Lee Brown, will be tried for violation of Article 16 to 21, inclusive of the Space Transport Code. Purser, bring in the prisoner. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Ladies, ladies! Those cheap extroverts, and they call themselves responsible. Ladies, dear ladies, thank you, ladies. But, Lee Brown, I order your person and belongings impounded for the duration of this voyage as set forth in sections 41 and 45. Captain, the sections are 43 and 45. Uh, you're, you're quite right, Miss Farling. Sections 43 and 45 of the Mother Anita Law Emergency Interplanetary Directives. Aren't you even going to give me a fair trial before you hang me? Yes, 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 yes. Talk to me! Talk to me! Ladies, I beg of you, ladies... Captain, what exactly are the charges against me? You're a stowaway. I can pay for my passage. You can? Well, then I guess we can dismiss the charges. Ladies, gentle ladies. Ladies, gentle 
ladies. Just a moment, Captain. Uh, yes, Miss Farling? I demand justice. You can't let him off that lightly. Besides, there's the other charge. What other charge? Assault. That comes under sections 18 through 35 of the McDonald Law. It does? Well, then would you tell the court in your own words exactly what happened? Well, when I first laid eyes on Mr. Brown, he seemed to be a fundamentally decent chap, despite his barbaric notions on equality between the sexes, or worse. I was positive I could shame him into a more rational social behavior and make him give himself up. Go on, Miss Farling. Just as I was getting over the colossal impudence involved in his proposing marriage and was considering the offer seriously on its merits, as one should consider all suggestions, he deliberately dropped the pretense of reason. Get her. Ferdinand. My name is Ford, and you're nothing but a big snitch. You promise not to get Butt into trouble. <laughs> Your name is Ferdinand, and stop trying to act forcefully like a girl. It doesn't become you. Miss Sparling, did I understand you to say that you were considering Mr. Brown's proposal of marriage? That is true. I will not deny that he appealed to me. He appealed to me as, as most savage ancients appeal to their women, as an emotional machine. <laughs> Throw the proper switches, says his theory, and the female surrenders herself ecstatically to the doubtful and bloody murk of masculine plans. I'm afraid I still don't understand. What exactly did Mr. Brown do? He kissed me. Oh, oh, ladies, 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 please, ladies. Uh, Mr. Brown, do you deny kissing Miss Barling? No, Miss Barling. Do you deny enjoying the kiss? Your question is irrelevant and immaterial. Oh, she enjoyed it. How would you know? Well, I was right there. I could tell the way she acted. She sort of held the back of his neck, closed her eyes, and just hung on. <sighs> what were you doing there? I introduced him. I met Bud first. Then I took Sis over there to meet him. I see. Ferdinand Sparling, I hereby order your detention for the duration of this voyage for aiding and abetting a stowaway as set forth in sections 41 43 and, 43 and 45. And, 45. and you can't arrest Ferdinand. He's only a child. You gave me your word. No charges would be lodged against the boy. That was the usual promise one makes to an informer. But I made it before I knew it was Butley Brown you were talking about. I didn't want to arrest Butley Brown. You forced me. So, I'm breaking my promise to you, just as I understand you broke your promise to your brother. I'm afraid both Ferdinand and Butley Brown will be picked up at New Kalamazoo Spaceport and sent terror ward for trial. But I used all our money to buy passage. I'm sorry. You'll have to return with your brother. Of course. There is a way out. There is? Well, tell me, please. Miss Sparling, if you'd marry Brown... Oh. Now, don't, don't, don't look at me like that. If you'd marry Brown, he would go on your passport as a dependent male member of your family. Do you think I'd marry that, that, that desperado? Why, he doesn't know enough to sit back and let a woman run things. Captain, you should be ashamed of yourself. I'll marry him! Perhaps I should be, but that's what comes of putting men in responsible positions. See here, Miss Sparling, I didn't want to arrest Brown. I'd still prefer not to. The officers and crew of my ship all go along with me. Why not? Men always think like men. They never use logic. They just rely on masculine intuition. Well, maybe so. This ship's crew are all residents of Earth. But our work requires us to be on Venus several times a year. We wouldn't want to cross any member of the Brown clan. They're all men of influence on the polar continent. I wouldn't doubt that for a second. If anyone gets in their way, they merely oxidize them with a blaster. Take Butt. He's a big man in his own bailiwick. The Galerton Archipelago. When he wants to put somebody in office, well, he just appoints them. Mr. Brown has that much influence, you say? Uh, power, actually. The kind a strong man usually wields in a newly settled community. Oh, Mr. Brown, if I marry you, would you promise to see that I'm appointed resident governor of the Galerton Archipelago? No. boy, Bart. Don't give in. Ferdinand, this does not concern you. Uh, Mr. Brown, I might even consider a county clerkship. Nope. Stick by your blasters, Bud. Show me you're a real man. Mr. Brown, it would seem to me that if you really want to marry this attractive young lady, a compromise could be worked out. Well, I could make her sheriff. Oh, no. Would the position of sheriff of the Gallerton Archipelago be acceptable, Miss Barling? Yes. 
Good. I'll marry you here and now. I want to be a bridesmaid. Only the bridesmaid. Never a bride. I can be every bride. But we shouldn't have sold out. Why did you do it? You don't have to marry her for my sake. I wouldn't care what they did to me. That's all right, Ted Pole. I'd do anything for my favorite brother-in-law. It's your like to be your brother-in-law. But gosh, you don't have to marry, sis. You've had any one of these 300 females. Why marry sis? I'm stubborn. What I like at first, I keep on liking. What I want at first, I keep on wanting until I get it. Yeah, but making her sheriff. What's going to happen to our man's world? Don't worry none about that, Ford, my boy. Wait till after we meet and go out to my islands. She'll find herself sheriff over exactly two Earth males, you and me. And I got a hunch that'll keep her pretty busy, huh? <laughs> huh? How about that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features An Eye for a What? A story of the Earthmen who thought they couldn't hurt a friendly alien if their lives depended on it, while all the time their lives did depend on it. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight, X-1 has brought you Venus is a Man's World, a story from the pages of Galaxy written by William Tenn and adapted for radio by Arthur Small. Featured in our cast were Dennis Bellabio as Ford, Bob Haig as Butt, Jerry Ann Raphael as Carrie, John Gibson as the Captain, and Frederica Chandler as Evelyn. This is Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. Next week, X-1 presents Trap by Finn O'Donovan. Fur hunters tangle with a bottle of fire water and a new kind of trap which catches more than they bargain for. We hope you'll be listening next week at this same time. At Radio Gold, we love classic radio, and we look forward to producing and presenting a great variety of new shows like this one every week in our efforts to keep this high-quality art form alive. If you like what we do, please like the video, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified whenever a new show drops. Thank you kindly for your support. Radio Gold is a three nines fine radio production. See you next time. Mm-hmm.